Welcome. In this lecture, we're going to talk about temperature change across a production choke. So let's consider our generic uh, diagram of a choke where we have a sudden contraction and a sudden expansion. And we have seen before that the pressure actually reduces dramatically in the choke. So you might have, for example, in this case, reaching to this contraction, you have a very abrupt uh, decline, and then it, it recovers a very sharp increase just passing that contraction. But then that pressure actually remains uh, relatively constant, or you might have some recovery from the throat to the outlet, but actually that recovery sometimes is not that much. So because of that change in pressure, typically um, also this process is adiabatic. Essentially, there is very little heat transfer with the environment. The fluid is also going to change its temperature. And uh, typically, if, if it's a gas, if, if it's a compressible fluid, if I reduce the pressure, then the temperature will also be reduced. Uh, but if it's a liquid, for example, it could happen that the temperature actually increases uh, during the, across the choke. So that depends a bit on the fluid and of course, well, the most critical case if I have a compressible fluid. As also, we should take into account the velocity because we initially, when we come in here, the energy of the fluid, most of it is in, in terms of uh, internal energy the, due to the temperature. But when I go to the throat, actually the kinetic energy starts to become very relevant uh, because the velocity is very high. So we have there some balance of energy that we have to take into account if we were interested to know what is the temperature at the throat. So why is it important to look into temperature across the choke? Well, here I have, there are two examples. One, for example, if I have a very um, low cooling, so then the temperature in the choke becomes uh, lower than uh, a freezing temperature, for example. This might cause condensation of uh, atmospheric uh, of water from atmospheric air and then will cause them to freeze on top of the surface of the choke and this actually affects the functionality of the choke because then we cannot actuate the choke as we want it, it might be necessary to do defrosting before we act, we actuate the choke and also it affects in situations of emergency that I cannot use the choke as I should Another case which might be more uh, critical is that I have inside the choke, also I have due to the presence of water and light hydrocarbon molecules and low temperature, actually have the formation of hydrates, which are like ice-like molecules made of uh, water and, low, and small hydrocarbons. So these particles can actually uh, merge and clog the, some passages of the choke, which are relatively small. And then the choke simply becomes stuck and I cannot use it uh, also it doesn't fulfill its functionality. So to look at the, how to understand what happens with the temperature across the choke, we have to rely on the energy conservation equation for open systems. And here the open system, we're going to make a sketch. It's uh, consisting of an inlet. We have some system, I'm going to make it generic like that. That can be my choke, the outlet, and then we make a boundary around that. That's going to be our open system. Importantly, that open system is a, a steady state. That means there is no accumulation of energy in this volume with time. That's typically how our systems are. Uh, and the external boundary of the system is stationary. That means that I have no, no inflating or deflating. There is no change in time. If I have, uh, we can say here also that the way that uh, boundary interacts with, with the environment is that you have two contributions. You have the Q and you have uh, the W, the work. Um, and, yeah. and then the equation tells you that the energy, the rate of energy coming in minus the rate of energy coming out plus um, heat plus um, work or power is going to be equal to zero. Okay, and, and please, uh, is here is very important the direction. So these are positive, these two, if they are coming inside the system. So that means if I'm heating the system, uh, it's coming, the heat is coming from the environment to the element, then that will be positive. The same thing with work. If I have, for example, a pump in which I have here a motor and it's giving work to the fluid, then that will be also positive. Okay, in the opposite way, if I'm obtaining energy from the, from the uh, volume, then in that case, this will be negative.
Okay, so um, let's see first what do we have in this rate of energy that is coming in. What should we include here? So we have here, here typically the internal energy. And this is U, the internal uh, energy, specific internal energy. We also have um, the potential energy, in which we have G and Z, where Z is the elevation. And we also have the kinetic energy, velocity squared and just to make everything consistent in terms of the mass that is going and that is mass in time so then we have to multiply times the mass flow uh, typically we we say in a choke that essentially this term of potential energy the variation is is very close to zero because we uh, essentially, the, the elevation of change in a choke is very small, so then we can simply neglect that term. And the kinetic energy will depend on where we are looking at, but like we said, we are going to be looking also maybe at the throat, so in that case, the velocity might be very high and this term might be important. So let's keep it for now. Let's now look at the rest of the equation. So now we have the heat. This heat typically in the choke is equal to zero because it's... Um, it's uh, very short and uh, the exchange with the environment is very small. But then we have this term which is work. And here in work there are many different terms. But first let's look at the most obvious which is the shaft work. Okay, which is this, uh, if we have an agitator, we have a shaft that is crossing this uh, boundary and is causing some agitation like a pump or is receiving some agitation like a turbine. This we are going to say is zero for a choke. We don't have anything like that on a choke. But then we have also something that is called flow work. That is simply work that the fluid is doing just to get inside the the domain and also the that the domain is doing on the fluid to get out of the domain so you have two types of work that they are like piston work and they are just essentially to get inside and to leave the domain you have some exchange of work there and that type of work typically we we use if it's a, like a piston type work we use p dv or p on variation on volume uh, and then something interesting happens that we don't have to carry that like a separate uh, work term. But we can, we know there is another thermodynamic property, which is enthalpy. That essentially is uh, H. We use the letter specific enthalpies with the letter H, small h. And this is going to be equal to U plus P times V. Okay, which essentially is the same similar term that what we have there. Okay, so if we include somewhat that term of flow work to get inside and outside of the volume we include it together with the u then what we end up is with the following equation we are saying that mass flow times h plus v squared over 2 is is simply this is constant because it's equal at the inlet is equal than at the outlet Okay, and essentially um, the mass flow is also constant if uh, we because if uh, what come whatever comes in comes out and then that simply reduces the equation to h plus v squared over 2 is this is constant what this equation tells you is that the energy is actually split between enthalpy and kinetic energy if for example at the inlet of the choke the, the velocity is small then most of the energy will be here in this term uh, that means high pressure and, and well, high temperature might have. But then when I go to the throat, at the throat the velocity is very high and the pressure is very low. So what this indicates is that the U also should be small. And for the U to be small, well actually then the temperature also has to be, has to be reduced. Now, if, uh, for example, we are sometimes, this, this we have to apply this equation if we want to see what happens along the choke and we want to see exactly what happens at the contraction. But we, in most of the cases, we are concerned about what is the temperature downstream of the choke because actually that's well a kind of a good indication if I have significant cooling or not. I know that the situation might be a bit different at the throat, but essentially I'm concerned about the discharge of the choke. At the discharge of the choke, well, the velocity is not as high as in the throat because then the cross-section area is much bigger. Okay, so of course, this velocity is somewhat bigger than the inlet, 
but it won't be as high as the one at the throat. So if that's the case, I can sometimes say that they neglect the kinetic energy term. The change in kinetic energy, that means, for example, from in to out. I'm applying the equation only between in and out. And that tells you, then that simplifies the equation that h in simply is h out. And that tells you that the process across a choke from the inlet to the outlet, not what happens inside the choke, but only what happens uh, if you take the two extreme points, is isenthalpic. That means with the same enthalpy. Okay, that's only if I take into account the inlet and the outlet. If I do it between, for example, the inlet and the throat, then I should consider that term. So just to see an example of that, let's consider, uh, let's use, for that we need enthalpy. Uh, we need to know the property called enthalpy. So as an example, I brought here a diagram of methane, uh, which is uh, most of the many uh, production gases, actually they are a high percentage, uh, a mole percentage of methane. And this is an enthalpy diagram, pressure enthalpy diagram that tells you pressure in megapascals. Uh, remember 10 of these are uh, 1 megapascal is 10 bar. And then we have here on the x-axis, we have the enthalpy. Okay, so, and then we have, let's look at some lines. So here I'm going to make ones, ones that are in blue. These are going to be isotemperature lines. Okay, for example, here you have the 100 temperature line. Here you have the 150. It's a bit, a bit of a strange diagram, but actually it's going to be useful to understand what is going to occur. So let's say we have a, a choke that is operating with the following conditions. We have this choke, we have in, and we have 2, and the in, let's say, is 200 bar, and we, it's at a temperature of 100 C. Then at the outlet, let's say we drop that to 30 bar, and we want to know that temperature, what temperature will it, will it have? Okay, and we're going to make the assumption that H1 is equal to H2. And we're also further going to make the assumption that the fluid is well is pure methane. If we have other gases, well, it, it, other components, then the, the diagram will be slightly different. And then for that, maybe I need simply to use a process simulator or a thermodynamic simulator. Okay, so let's see here 200. First, we have to locate the inlet on number one. So that will be um, 100 bar, uh, 200 bar. 200 bar is here, is 20 megapascals, essentially. So that is this line. And I cross it with the 100 line here. So this will be my point number one. Now, point number two is located at 30 bar. So 30 bar is uh, here, this line. Okay, and, and now I know, and uh, now I need another property to uh, to define to define the temperature, right? So I need the pressure here. You see, I had the pressure and the temperature, and I will be able to find the enthalpy. I simply go down here and I read the enthalpy, okay, which is a bit higher than this is the enthalpy of that point. So it's like kilojoule per kilogram, okay, specific enthalpy. But now I need uh, for that for the for the outlet I need another property. I have 30, but then I need another property. And in this case, I know that because H1 is equal to H2, then I know that H2, if H1 is approximately, then that means that H2 is exactly equal to H1, which is again. Remember here, I'm, I'm kind of reading poorly from the chart, so it might be that is not very accurate. Okay, so that means that this point here, actually that's your point number two, and that temperature is, uh, let's, let's again look at the temperature curves. Here you have, this is 50, okay, and here you have 60, and it will be something between 60 and 70. So from here, it seems that the temperature is somehow the temperature of two is approximately maybe around uh, 60, 63 or something like that. 
Okay, so you see that's the reduction in temperature we had across the choke and assuming that you have a nice enthalpic process. If I would have had asked what happens at the throat, then it's a different story because then I have to include the kinetic energy. The enthalpy is not any more constant, but these terms, is, this is what is constant, this term, and then I should include the velocity. But if I say that the kinetic energy term is uh, negligible, then I can simply equal enthalpies and then I can find uh, the temperature.